Hello everyone, my name is Mahima and in this video we are going to talk about emergency shell and what data you should capture from an emergency shell to provide on a support ticket. So what is an emergency shell? An emergency shell is a minimal command line interface. Sometimes something goes wrong during the intertramises stage of your system's boot process. When this happens, you will see entering emergency mode printed to the screen followed by a shell prompt. The tracker emergency shell is an interactive mode that can be initiated while the inner premises is still loaded. This gives you a chance to try and fix things up manually and continue the boot process. Then what happens when you cannot resolve the issue in emergency mode? If troubleshooting in emergency mode fails, rdsourcereport.txt becomes your best option to extract and analyze logs externally. What is rdsourcereport.txt? The rdsourcereport.txt is a diagnostic log file generated by Dragnet which contains important debugging information when the system fails to boot and enters the Dragnet emergency shell. When the boot process encounters an issue like failing to mount the root file system or loading kernel modules, RDSource report generates a log file under slash run slash initramfs to help diagnose the problem. The initramfs stage occurs just before the root file system is mounted. Dragnet is a tool that is used to manage initramfs. If the system fails to proceed past the inner transfer stage, Tracker enters a shell and RD source report is automatically invoked and saved in a file. The RD source report.txt can also be generated manually using the command RD source report. What information does RD source report.txt contain? Kernel messages, Dracket logs showing inner transfer execution steps, system journal logs from early boot stages, Errors related to disk mounting, file system issues and drivers, network related logs if network boot is involved. Now let's see a demonstration on how to collect rdsourcereport.txt in emergency mode. On this screen, we can see various warning messages of Dracket init queue timeout scripts. Over here, we see starting Dracket emergency shell. Below it, we see warning messages and then we see generating slash run slash in a tram affairs slash rd source report dot txt and below this we see our dragger shell. The first step that we will be performing on our affected server is to enable network and transfer rd source report dot txt from our non-working system to a working host. I will execute the command ip link to display available devices that are connected to the system. In the output of the command you can see this device is in state down mode. Moving forward, you will need to determine which interface should be used depending upon the IP address change that is exposed to each interface. The next command that we will be executing is IP link set dev our device name and up. To confirm that the device is up, execute IP link and we can see state up. Next, add an IP address to the device in the form of IP ADDR at IP address slash netmask dev and the name of the device. Validate that the right IP address was assigned by using the command IP space A. Then add a default route if you need to transfer the RD source report to a host on a different subnet. You can add a default route to the device in the form of IP root at default via gateway IP address. Validate that the right route was assigned by using IP root command. Now moving on to our working host, we will be using netcat utility. Please note that the netcat package is not available by default on minimal systems and you will have to install it using yum or dnf install nmap hyphen ncat. We will be using an unused port 7000 and will ensure that the port is allowed through the firewall using this command such as firewall hyphen cmd hyphen hyphen zone equals public hyphen hyphen add hyphen port equals 7000 slash tcp space hyphen hyphen permit. The output of the command should return as success. Then execute firewall hyphen cmd space hyphen hyphen reload. The output of this command should also return success. Next, 
to validate that the port was added successfully, execute firewall hyphen cmd space hyphen hyphen list hyphen port. The output displays the port 7000 that we have added through the firewall. Now using our netcat utility hyphen l for listen, our local IP address, the unused port which we have allowed through firewall and the received data will be stored into our resource report.txt. Once I hit enter, as you can see, the command execution is not complete as the port is still waiting to receive the data. Now back in emergency shell on our affected server, execute cat slash run slash inatramifus slash our resource report, redirecting it to slash dev slash tcp, the IP address of our working host and the port which we had allowed through the firewall. The command execution is complete. On our working host, the command execution is complete as well as it has received the data. We will validate this using the ls command and we can see the rdsource report.txt is successfully transferred. Moving forward, we will see an alternate method to collect rdsource report.txt given that you have at least one working or fallback kernel. Now, for the first scenario, when you can mount two file system, check whether the system storage can be activated and mounted using the command lvm vg change space hyphen a1. We can see two logical volumes in the volume group rel are now active. We will execute mount slash dev slash mapper slash rel hyphen root space slash sysroot. You will need to adjust according to your naming scheme. I will hit enter and the command execution is now complete. Then we will copy our init tramfs slash rdsource report.txt onto sysroot slash root. We will validate this using ls hyphen l slash sysroot slash root slash rdsource report.txt and hit enter. We can see the file is present in this location. Now for the second scenario, if you are not able to mount root and activate your storage, then mount slash boot storage device and copy the rdsource report file on our slash boot. So we will mount our slash boot device over here using the command mount slash dev slash vda1 space slash sysroot slash boot. Once the boot device is successfully mounted, we will copy our rdsource report.txt to our slash boot. Validate the same using ls hyphen l slash sys root slash boot slash rdsource report dot txt and we can see the file is present in this location. Now if we reboot our system and back to the boot process on a grub menu, we will be selecting the second kernel as it is our fallback kernel since the latest kernel is our affected kernel. Once the system boots up, we can validate the rdsource report dot txt is present. And under slash boot, we can see the RD source report is present as well. So this is how you can collect RD source report.txt and extract it for further analysis. Thank you.